another month at Kids Church at WUMC. I'm so excited to start a whole new Life App with you guys today. You guys, Life App is just um just kind of a big idea that we can apply to our lives to help us follow Jesus. So, who is here with me today, ready to dig into this new idea? Ah, uh, hey, Cami. Hi, Piper. Hi, Corbin. Hi, Harley. Hi, Kalani. Hi, Sammy. So glad you guys are all here with me today. Hey, have you guys ever heard of upcycling? So that's when you um, take something that's old or maybe a little worn out or broken and kind of give it a new lease on life. You can uh, turn it into something new instead of just throwing it away. You see, I'm a big believer in rolling with what I've got. It's actually what we're talking about this month, too. It's called contentment. Contentment is just learning to be okay with what you have. Like my papa used to say, don't buy new when you can make do. Now, it's not always like that. I have to say I love Amazon. But anyway, um, I'm going to show you a few images of some upcycled items, okay? Things that have been recreated, and you guys have to guess what they were initially. Sound fun? All right, here's the first picture. Yeah, that's a sofa made from an old bathtub. Kind of cool. How about this one? Yeah, it's a little bowl made out of buttons. Nice, right? Okay, how about this? That bathroom shelf was made out of an old drawer. Did you see the handles on the side? Okay, here's another one. Yeah, at first I thought maybe that was um, belts or ties, and it is kind of belts. They're old seat belts. So cool. All right, here's the last one. I think this is the hardest one. I couldn't figure it out. What is this lamp made out of? Plastic spoons. Can you believe that? Some people got super creative in their upcycling. Yeah, I bet you guys could do that too. Why don't you go for it? Try. Find something around the house this week that is kind of old and run down and see if you can turn it into something new. So I know that it is not always easy to be okay with what you have. But one sure way to find contentment is to trust Jesus. When you know him, that means you know that he's going to take care of you and that he's always on your side. Paul once wrote to the Philippians, my God will meet all of your needs from Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. You guys, that's true for us too. God always takes care of us. And our memory verse for this month can help us remember to just be aware of wanting more and more when we really have plenty. Watch out. Be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. And that's from Luke chapter 12 verse 15. So we are going to sing a new song together um, that we're going to be practicing all month and tell God that we will choose to depend on Him and find our contentment in Him. It's time to worship. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
to learning it with you guys this month. So, um, have any of you guys ever written a letter to someone? Not an email, not a text, like a real letter written on paper and folded up and placed in an envelope and put an address and a stamp on it and then dropped it in the mailbox at the post office? Who does that anymore, right? Well, we can learn a lot now from the letters that Paul wrote to followers of Jesus way back. That's what we find in the Bible. So let's see what Paul has to tell and teach us from his letter to the church at Philippi. It's Bible story time! The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. We live in a time where it's really easy to communicate. In two seconds, I can send a text to a friend in another state or hop on a FaceTime call with my dear auntie on the other side of the world. <laughs> But when the Apostle Paul was planting brand new churches, it was not a simple matter for him to stay in touch with the new believers in places he had traveled. Every letter had to be carefully handwritten and then hand delivered. Plus, travel was often difficult and dangerous. It would take weeks, if not months, for a letter to even arrive. So whenever Paul wrote a letter, he chose the very most important things to say. Every word mattered, including these verses he wrote to the believers at the church in Philippi. I have learned to be content no matter what happens to me. I know what it's like not to have what I need. I also know what it's like to have more than I need. I have learned the secret of being content no matter what happens. I am content whether I'm well-fed or hungry. I'm content whether I have more than enough or not enough. I can do all this by the power of Christ. He gives me strength. See, Paul wanted the Philippians and us to understand that God can help us be okay in any situation, no matter what we face. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, yeah, that's easy for Paul to say. I mean, and that was true. To start off, he was a well-to-do, well-known, respected religious leader with a lot of power. But when Paul met Jesus, Why are you opposing me? Who are you, Lord? Everything changed. Paul's new outspoken beliefs upset both the Jewish leaders who had been his friends and the Greek and Roman leaders who were afraid Paul would cause trouble. Paul himself recorded some of the crazy situations he experienced during his travels. In a letter to the Corinthians, he explained, I have been in prison. I have suffered terrible beatings. Again and again, I almost died. Three times, I was shipwrecked. I have been in danger from rivers and robbers. I have been in danger from my fellow Jews and in danger from Gentiles. I have been in danger in the city, in the country, and at sea. I have been in danger from people who pretended they were believers. Often I have gone without sleep. I have been hungry and thirsty. Now, Paul truly understood what it was like to face difficult situations of every kind. In fact, when he wrote his words to the Philippians about contentment, he was under arrest and couldn't even leave the house. Now, your story is different from Paul's. If you were to tell a trusted friend what you were going through, it might sound something like this. I've had to wear my same sneakers, even when my friend got a new pair. I've had to live one place during the week and another on the weekend. I've had to settle for a movie night, even though I wanted a sleepover instead. I've had to live with a cast on my arm for two months. I've had to sit alone at the lunch table. I've had to miss summer camp because dad took a job that didn't pay as much. I've had to eat meatloaf at home when I wanted to eat out. God knows your story. He knows all the ups and downs you face. He knows what you have and what you don't have. But no matter what happens, God loves you. He's given his only son, Jesus, to make a way to live with him forever. He's provided everything you need to choose contentment. As Paul reminds us, I have learned to be content no matter what happens to me. I am content whether I have more than enough or not enough. 
I can do all this by the power of Christ. He gives me strength. You guys, listen to that last part again. I can do all this through the power of Christ. He gives me strength. You guys can find your true contentment in your relationship with God. God knows your story. He knows what you have and what you don't have. And no matter what happens, God loves you so much. He gave you his son Jesus so that you could have a relationship with him that's going to last forever. That's huge, you guys. God is always working things out for good for the people that who love him. And he provides everything that we need. We just have to choose contentment. It comes down to this simple, simple truth. God can help you be content. So let's pray and thank God right now for being so very good to us. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for all that you've given us. Thank you for loving us. Sometimes it's tough for us to feel content, especially when things are tough or we want things that someone else has. But we know that what Paul wrote is true. We can always find our strength in you. We can find contentment when we remember how you sent Jesus to be our savior. Help us choose to be content and learn to be okay with what we have. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. So we talked a lot about, um, we talked about a lot of tough things that um, we might go through in life. Paul sure knew what that was like, right? I mean, all sorts of crazy things happened to him as he traveled all around to tell people about Jesus. But Paul knew the secret that helped him be content through all of it. He said, I can do all of this by the power of Christ. He gives me strength. So at the end of the day, your relationship with God is your true source of contentment. It's what it all comes down to. God can help you be content, you guys. Say that with me. That's our bottom line for this week, right? It's the thing I really want us to remember. God can help you be content. When you, when I, when we put our trust in Jesus, we can rely on him and the Holy Spirit to give us the strength that we need when we're not content about something. You can choose to be content when you choose to trust God no matter what. And you guys, we can talk to Jesus when we're not feeling content. That's okay. He knows. So when something doesn't go your way or doesn't go the way you expect, talk to God about it. Ask him to help your, help to see your situation maybe in a different way. So why don't you guys go ahead and download the small group activities so you can dig a little deeper and, um, or come see me at Family Chapel this Sunday at 915 and Kids Church Live at 10 o'clock here at WUMC. So you guys, I hope you have a great week being content no matter what. I love you.